Well, hello, folks out there in YouTube land. Got a big show lined up for you. Let's get right on into it. All right, here we go. The Elite Eight. It's going to be very exciting. We're going to do an update and a preview of the games remaining. I couldn't be more pumped. This is going to be super exciting. There are two SEC clubs still in there, Clemson. We're going to go through all that. There are teams that I didn't think had any chance, NC State. And I was stuck at work all day yesterday. Drink it up, big boss. All right, drink it up, gambler. So I didn't do a video until after the game, which was after midnight. But anyway, I will get to watch tonight uh, the games and then, of course, uh, tomorrow. All right, so let's take a look at what we got left. You've got Illinois who's got to play UConn, and UConn has absolutely been on fire. They've been kicking butts and taking names. Quit hitting yourself! Quit hitting yourself! Quit hitting yourself! The water tastes good, yes! <laughs> it's been kind of ridiculous. So I, I don't feel so good about that Illinois game. I'm thinking UConn's going to take them down, and I think that's what everybody thinks. But that's not really the games that I'm the most interested in. This Clemson-Alabama game should be fantastic. Alabama, I didn't think there was any way they could beat North Carolina, and they sure did. They didn't have the horses to do it, but you know what? In a one-and-done, you get hot, the other team gets a little cold in places, you win the ball game. It does not matter. It just doesn't matter! It just doesn't matter! It just doesn't matter! It just doesn't. And Clemson has been kind of a Cinderella boy. And I've been kind of rooting for him because I like I kind of like the Cinderellas. And a lot of people are like, oh, Alabama's so lucky and Clemson's so lucky to play each other. Let me show you something. As you can see, Clemson took out a number two team, Arizona, which kind of which surprised a lot of people. Arizona was kind of a hot pick. And then Alabama, of course, took out North Carolina. So these so these two teams, the reason they're playing each other. A well, four versus six is because they already took out the monster. So they deserve to play each other. Everybody's thinking, oh, they got so easy. They're going to, one of these teams has got an easy route. No, they didn't. They didn't have an easy route at all. The higher your ranking is, the tougher it is. Being a number six or a number four is much more difficult to get to the final four than it is if you're a number one because you're going to be playing tougher competition. So I think this is going to be a really fun game. I tell you, it's hard to pick here. If Alabama gets hot from three, they'll win this game. But Clemson is tough. I tell you, they are playing great. And I would not be shocked if Clemson won this game, not at all. So that's going to be a really fun one to watch. Then you've got the two games tomorrow. NC State really is the Cinderella team of all of them, a number 11. And they get to play Duke number four because Houston's best player, their guard, got a sprained ankle. Otherwise, Houston would have won that game. That just took the spirit out of them. They still almost beat Duke, even without their top player. And that is such a shame to see a kid get a, a sprained ankle like that. I'm sure he's just brokenhearted. That is beyond frustrating. But NC State's been playing really well, and they're coming off an ACC tournament victory, so they're very uh, hot right now. So I think they could beat Duke. NC State, a number 11 seed, could wind up in the Final Four. And let's take a look at their uh, path. And right here, just like uh, Alabama and Clemson, they had to beat a number two, Marquette, and they sure did it. They beat Oakland, which they got really fortunate here in that Oakland beat Kentucky. They should have had to go through Kentucky and then Marquette, Marquette which would have been an even tougher uh, slate. But again, you had to beat a number two just to get to this spot. And Duke, of course, had to beat number one, Houston. Yes, they were very fortunate in that Houston's best player got hurt. But you know what? That's the way the cookie crumbles in the NCAA tournament. Sometimes you got to get lucky. And for Duke, they, they pretty much did. And for Houston, they got the bad luck. I really felt like Houston could take this whole thing, and a lot of other people did too. But again, when you beat a number one seed, you get to keep going, and that makes it easier. Now you get to play a number 11 seed instead of a number two. So NC State, I guess, man, there's a lot of Cinderella's. I'm going to put Clemson and NC State in the Cinderella role. Alabama's pretty darn good. I can't put them in Cinderella role. Now you've got number one versus number two, Tennessee, and this is what everybody thought it would be, that these two teams would wind up uh, meeting again, and they sure did. And Purdue is a tough matchup for anybody. They've got that monster seven-foot-four guy that will absolutely give you nightmares. On good for Happy Gill, oh my God! Oh my God! Oh yeah, 
Yeah, he will definitely bend your nine iron. <laughs> and this is going to be a fascinating game. Purdue got here in pretty much the old-fashioned way. They just beat everybody they were supposed to beat all the way down the line. And they didn't have too hard of a go of it. Their closest game, I guess, was what, 12 points, Gonzaga. And Gonzaga's a solid team, but they were a number five seed. Everything went exactly the way it was supposed to on their bracket. And now they're sitting right here in the Elite Eight. Tennessee, the same thing. They had an easy win over St. Peter's. They barely beat Texas, even though Tennessee shot 12% from three. They just beat Creighton, which was a heck of a ball game. Tennessee got hot, went on an 18-0 run. And Tennessee's defense was absolutely stifling. I knew we could out-athlete them and that we'd have more speed. But Creighton's such a good shooting team. You know, they'll fill it up from three if you give them the opportunity. Fortunately, we stayed on them on that three-point line. They still made a bunch of threes because they're just great shooters. And they hit every free throw they ever looked at. But Tennessee was able to uh, best them. And, of course, uh, Dalton Connect was great. Dalton's just a heck of a player. He is a, a special athlete. He's good. He's real good. The name is Dalton. Yep. Yeah, don't forget the name. You're going to see it in the NBA. Roadhouse. But things pretty much went as they were supposed to, number two seed all the way down to the Elite Eight to play Purdue. So this one was sort of a perfect bracket all the way across the board for the most part. So that's how you get a one versus a two. And Tennessee's already played Purdue once in the Maui Invitational. They lost by four points. It was a good game. Both our big guys got fouled out because they were trying to deal with Edie. And he is an absolute nightmare in there. And he's a good free throw shooter too. It's, uh, it's really tough. Everybody has to hack him. And the, really the only way to uh, keep that from happening, you've got to deny him the ball, and that's really hard to do. He's got arms that go forever. So it's not that difficult to get the ball into him. And we've got two big guys. Neither one's big enough to deal with him. But, I mean, who's got somebody big enough to deal with a seven foot four dude that's almost, what, 260, 270? But Tennessee absolutely can win this ball game If they hit from three and they play that stifling defense and don't allow them to hit the threes, and somehow Edie's going to get his points. He's going to get his rebounds and his points. You've just got to uh, play good enough on your side of the ball on offense to outscore him because they're going to get their points. He's going to score his 25 to 30 points. He just always does. He's going to get his 12 to 14 rebounds. It's very, it's very hard to deal with that, but they are beatable. They've lost several games. And uh, last time, like I said, Tennessee was within four. And I can tell you right now, Zakai Ziegler is going to have a say in this ball game because his defense has been phenomenal in this uh, tournament. He has stolen the ball or created more problems on offense for the other team than any player in this entire uh, tournament. He's been the defensive player of the, uh, of the NCAAs, and that's why he was the player of the year in the SEC at five foot nine. So I'm really looking forward to these ball games. They got two tonight with Illinois and UConn at 6 o'clock, Clemson and Alabama at 849. Then Tennessee's playing at 220 tomorrow, 505 uh, for the NC State Duke game. So we got four ball games the next two days. I don't know who's going to stop UConn. I think they get in the Final Four without too much trouble, and they're probably going to play for the national championship. I have not seen anybody even dent them. They are so good from one through five. They don't have like one guy that scores 100 points. They've just got like a, a bunch of guys that can score 15. They're so well-rounded, you can't really focus on one or two guys. You've got to play the entire team, and they've been hot as a firecracker. So somebody's going to have to catch them on a cold night and somehow eke through a victory. Otherwise, UConn's probably going to win this whole thing. But you never know. It's a one and done. Anything can happen. You saw what happened to Houston. You saw what happened to North Carolina. I didn't think, like I said, I didn't think there was any way Alabama could beat North Carolina, but they sure did. So it's going to be a fascinating uh, two days, and I'm really looking forward to it. It's really fun having my, my, my team in it. <laughs> and if you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's continue to cover all these big games. And if you've not subscribed, it's right here on your right, my left. Just hit this little button. I'd appreciate it. And right over here is the most recent video YouTube. Thanks you'll enjoy. We'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jay.